This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is the last lecture on accruals and prepayments um, in the lecture notes. In the uh, last lecture, we went through example two uh, on accruals, but I did say for completeness, we need to go through what happens in the following year. Uh, and so, can you turn to example four? Uh, in the notes. Now remember it is effectively continuing from example two, so how about in front of you? Um, well, I won't rewrite what we did uh, earlier. But let's look at example four. During the year to the 31st of March 2002, so this time, remember last time we got up to March 2001, this time we're going from the 1st of April 2001, to the 31st of March 2002, he made the following payments in respect of telephone. So in April he paid 9.50. Ah, that was for the three months to March. That was a bit at the end of last year, but we paid in April. In July, 1,000 for three months to June. In October, 1,200 for three months to September. And in January, uh, 2002, three months to December. At 31st of March 2002, which was our year end, well, he's only actually paid up to December, uh, but at March, we estimate that 1500 was owing for those last three months. Uh, but he's not received a bill. I know I've yet to explain how they might estimate, and I will, but for the moment, it says 1500, it says 1500. Well, let's again, although I will show you the debits credits after, let's work out what will appear in the statement of profit and loss, what will appear in the statement of financial position. And although you can get the same figure several ways, I don't care. The most efficient is this. First of all, what was the total cash paid during the year? Well, our year started April, so on the 12th of April he paid 9.50, July another 1,000, October another 1,200, January another 13.50. So the total cash paid, I'll cheat here, let's have a... The cash paid was 4,500. Why was that uh, uh, the cash paid? Why is that not the expense for the year? Well, for two reasons. First of all, at the end of last year, we were owing money. And so part of what we paid this year was in fact what was owing from last year. That first 950, remember? We paid it this year, but it's not a cost for this year. It was last year's cost. And so we need to subtract what was owing at the start of the year, the accrual at the end of last year. And 950, remove it. Because again, I want the expense for this year and the 4,500 included that payment for three months of last year. Uh, we're not finished, though, because although that does leave us with those three payments, which were this year's expense, uh, we've only actually paid up to the end of uh, December. We still owe for January, February, March. And so we need to add the cost of those last three months, December, uh, sorry, January, February, March. So add the amount owing the accrual at the end of this year. Which again, we'd only pay to December, so we owe for January, February, March. Uh, 2002. And the question tells us the amount owing is 1500. And so the total expense for this year 
which will appear on the statement of profit or loss. Uh, four and a half thousand minus 950 plus 1500. 5050. So there's the expense. That's the statement of profit or loss. What about the statement of financial position? Well, under the heading current liabilities. Accruals or accrued expense is the amount owing at the end of the year. Well, again, we just had it. The amount owing was January, February, March, which was 1500. And there we are. Well, for the very, very last time, that's almost certainly what will be needed in the exam, just the figures. But just to be safe, let's again redo it in the T accounts, playing bookkeeper, playing accountant. And so, now remember again, we're carrying on from last year. If you look back at the end of last year, we had a telephone account, but the balance at the end of last year was zero. We start this year with a balance of zero. At the end of last year, we also had an accruals account. And at the end of last year, we had a credit balance of 950. Look back if you don't remember, but we did have a credit balance of 950. It was the amount owing for the accrual at the end of last year. Well, now let's move into this year. And the first thing the accountant does, a bit like we did with prepayments, before we give the books back to the bookkeeper, we reverse the accrual. Take out the accrual, 950, debit accrual, credit telephone. The balance on accruals is now zero. Now, the reason it's a bit less obvious than it was with prepayments, but it'll become very obvious in a moment. But that's what we do on the first day of the new year. Now we give the books to the bookkeeper, and as always, the bookkeeper, every time there's a payment, the bookkeeper enters it. So our year started 1st of April. On the 12th of April, we pay 950. Credit cash, debit telephone, 950. July, we pay a thousand credit cash debit telephone. October, twelve hundred. January, thirteen fifty. And as at the end of March, that's all the bookkeeper will have entered. The bookkeeper just enters every time we pay. Accountant arrives and takes the balance. Well, the balance, the debit side, adds up to 4,500. And so the balance, the missing figure, is 3,550. Telephone appears on statement of profit or loss, it's an expense, but before we uh, do that, always the accountant to look back at the last invoice, or the last payment rather, and check, <clears throat> have we paid too much or have we not paid enough? Well, let's look back at that last payment of 1350. That was paying up to the 31st of December we still owe for January, February, March. So we estimate the accrual. We'd only pay to December, we still owe for January, February, March. And the question tells us that we estimate we owe for those three months, we owe 1,500. And so to get the correct expense, 
So far there's 3,550, but we still owe an extra 1,500. Just as last year, we debit telephone to increase the expense. We credit accruals with the amount owing. And that one entry makes it all perfect. Because telephone, the total expense is now 5050. And as always, that goes to the statement of profit or loss. Credit telephone, debit statement of profit or loss. And the telephone account, the balance is zero, ready for next year. The accruals account, well, there's our liability at the end of this year, and that will appear in the statement of financial position. And as always, we leave the balance there. It's still there at the beginning of next year. And was that what I got? Yes, 1500, 550, there we are. All right, just a couple of things uh, before I leave this chapter. Uh, firstly, I think you can see the similarity with the prepayments. That you see you're going to have lots and lots, this is in real life, you'll have lots and lots of expenses. Some expenses you may not have paid enough, estimate the accrual. Other expenses like insurance, you've paid too much. Calculate the prepayment. Uh, and so the approach is always the same. Look at the last payment. If you've not paid enough, we need to increase it. Debit the expense, credit the accrual. If you've paid too much, you need to reduce the expense, credit the expense, debit prepayments. So in practice, lots and lots of accruals and prepayments. In the exam, you're tested just on an extract. Uh, the second and final thing, which I kept saying I'd come back to, was this estimate of the accrual. Clearly here, um, since it said last year we estimated 950, this year 1500, well, we use whatever we told. But I wonder where that figure comes from, you know, in real life, how do you know? Well, you could, uh, I guess, start reading meters. You know, electricity, you could have a meter, maybe telephone as well, in which case you could perhaps calculate. Otherwise, you might look at previous bills and say, oh, well, you know, if last month it was 13.50, or sorry, last payment, perhaps this time it'll be 30, oh, perhaps a little bit higher. So, you know, perhaps a guess. Now, but the question is, what happens if you've guessed wrongly? You know, last year we estimated it to be 9.50. And we have the accrual. Uh, this year we reversed the 950. Here it turned out the first payment was 950. Our guess was correct. But just suppose it turned out when we actually received the bill that we'd guessed wrong and the bill turned out to be 960. Now don't change yours, but you see if the bill actually turned out to be 960, Bookkeeper would have entered 960. And what are we going to do? Well, we carry on exactly as normal. Uh, because then, you know, what's going to happen? That would be 4510. The balance would be 3560. Three, uh, now, what I'm getting at here, you see, is Strictly, last year we got it wrong. We estimated 950 and it was actually 960. So last year, the expense should really have been $10 higher. But we can't now go back and change last year's. And so we carry on exactly as normal. And instead of making last year $10 higher, this year's expense ends up being $10 higher. It just corrects this year. So nothing changes. Do it exactly the way I've done it. 
and it will automatically correct itself this year. Uh, in real life, though, in fact, um, it's very rarely a question of guessing. Normally, in real life, you'll get it right. And the reason is, the accountant at the end of March comes to prepare the statements. But they don't just happen at midnight. You know, it tends to take quite a while to finish everything, to prepare the statements as at the end of March. Uh, and say, it, it will take several weeks, it might take a month to prepare the statements. And of course, the telephone bill is going to be received usually fairly early. We get it on sometime in April. And so by the time the accountant comes to finishing off the accounts, he's probably had the bill for the next three months. And instead of it being a guess, oh, we think it's 950 or 960, it normally will know what the amount is and will put the right figure in anyway. All right, that was just a practical point of view. As far as the exam and the rules are concerned, everything stays the way I've done it. Okay, so there we are. That's you've got on the last page is a summary of the various entries. Uh, but as I've kept stressing, be happy with the entries, but it's not normally the debits, credits, the tea accounts that matter for the exam.